Hey yo guys, welcome to my vengeance predictions, and I know since it was a nice afternoon, night, whatever you want to call it, I decided to go make a vid outside. Now this vid, since I probably won't get have time to make any tomorrow, will be my vengeance predictions video, and I'll guarantee you they're going to add a match and I won't predict it so well. but according to WWE.com, I got these matches. We'll go from bottom to top. Women's Championship match, Melina versus Candice Michelle. Finally, the culmination of the feud. I only know Melina has a new move. I mean, we know how this thing is built up. So Candice has won a lot. I'm taking Melina to win in the match for the title. If Candice Michelle is champion, retire that belt, burn it, and then they lose all their credible champions. The Cruiserweight Championship match, Chavo Guerrero versus Jimmy and Yang Wang. Where the fuck does this match come from? This comes out of nowhere. They've had like at least three matches on SmackDown. Wang winning pretty much all of them. And he gets a title match. Like this match, like all of a sudden WWE's like, oh yeah, we got a Cruiserweight division. Um, Chavo and Jimmy again. I, I don't know. Let's do it. My prediction will be Jimmy Wang Yang. I think he's definitely going to take the title off Chavo, or he should, would be the smart decision, because for way too long, he rarely defends it. If they give to Jimmy Wang Wang, then there can be more uh, cruiserweight matches, and it will be good for the company. So then the open challenge for the WWE Tag Team Championship, meaning Deuce and Domino have challenged anyone. I don't know who they're going to pick to come in, but it won't be a win for that Deuce and Domino. But Deuce and Domino are the worst tag team champions of all time. Hands down, the worst tag team champions of all time, ladies and gentlemen. So, this prediction video is moving right along. We've only got, what, one minute and 53 seconds in. <sighs> the World Tag Team Champions chip match. Lance Cade and Trevor Murdoch versus the Hardys. We don't need to see this match again. We saw it on, what was it, Backlash? We didn't see it on Judgment Day. We didn't see it on One Night Stand. We've seen them on Raw. We've seen these people so many times together, we don't need to see it. And as you think the Hardys have finally broken up, Vince just brings them back together to piss off. We want Matt Hardy's world title push. When are we going to get it? I thought for sure we were going to get it on the, uh, the first three-hour Raw, the draft special. But no, we did not get that because you are a pussy-ass bastard, Vince, for not doing it. And I don't care. I know Cade Murdoch are going to win. We're probably going to get a London Kendrick feud if Paul London doesn't get fired, which he probably will because Vince is being an idiot with his stupid storyline. But anyway, I just had to get that rant out. I mean, I haven't even voiced my opinion on the Vince storyline. But anyway, prediction is Cade Murdoch because hands down, the Hardys are going to separate, come back for another match, and whatever. It was stupid to even bring them back. And then the dumbest thing. JBL saying maybe we can get Jeff Hardy on SmackDown because then they can reunite the Hardys. JBL, have you not been watching the same product I have? They've been defending the titles all over the place. And then they lose them. And now they're going to lose them, not win, but they're going to the same match as they have been in for like almost three months. Good God. The United States Championship match, MVP versus Ric Flair. Ric Flair's been getting a push since the come to SmackDown. Uh, he will not win against MVP, but... I'm actually going to look forward to this match because MVP stated he'd be a greater U.S. champion than Rhodes, um, I forget who, Flair, uh, and someone else. I can't remember that promo exactly. So that would be a good match. I mean, definitely MVP will win. I'm, I want MVP to have a damn good title reign, but I don't think he's going to have a fantastic match with the chopping monster Ric Flair, to quote my homie, Excellence. So anyway, that's an MVP. The Intercontinental Championship match, Santino Morella versus Umaga. Please, Vince, if one title has to change hands, make it this one. Umaga get the win. Because Umaga was a more credible champion, Intercontinental Champion. He was way, he's way better than Santino. You can't have a champion, an Intercontinental Champion, with such greats as Perfect, Savage, Hart, uh, Austin, Owen Hart, Rock, Triple H, and Santino Morel, whose finisher is a roll-up. We cannot have him champion and defeat Umaga, and then Umaga's credibility goes down the tube so fast so my pick is Umaga now the first of the three world title matches so the first one is the ECW match title which is vacant right now between CM Punk and Chris Benoit if it's done right it's match of the year hands down on paper it's match of the year if it's done right it's match of the year my prediction is Benoit because I know Punk may still be in the bad books but he clearly is getting the push he deserves and I'm looking forward for a feud there. Maybe we can actually get Punk to turn heel after this, and that would be great. 
but I don't know. I'm not sure. I hope they do it, but they probably won't. But anyway, I'm just expecting a great match. Lots of technical wrestling, lots of aerial, lots of ground and pound, etc. But Punk to win, and probably an, uh, Elijah Burke, Marcus Corvon running. So that would be my prediction on that. But Chris Benoit will win the match. Then the World Heavyweight Championship match, Edge versus Batista, the last chance match. I guarantee you all are picking Batista. Edge because Edge just got pinned on SmackDown by Batista. So that's the WWE formula. You get the pin on the television show, you lose on the pay-per-view. Gotta pick Edge and gotta end this feud. We need to end it. We need someone to go after Edge now. We can't have Batista all the time. I hope it's Finley. Finley would be a good twist just because he's a good wrestler and SmackDown is limited. It's going to be Flair winning the world title at Mania 24. So those are just my thoughts on that. And then the WWE Championship Challenge match, the five-way match, which I believe is champion John Cena defending against Bobby Lashley, King Booker, Randy Orton, and Mick Foley. This match is the dumbest match of all time. Foley, Foley is like way past his prime, doesn't even need to be any more matches for his health's sake. King Booker is good to see on Raw, but I thought for sure he was still recovering. Like, Randy Orton is getting a push on Raw now, which is deserved, but he's not going to win. And then it leads us to Bobby Lash, Superman won John Cena, and Super only, you know, black Bobby Lashley. We don't care. It's going to either be Cena or Lashley winning. My prediction is Cena is still retained, but this is the stupidest match ever. It's probably going to be so bad because Foley has definitely lost a lot of his timing. Cena can't wrestle. Booker's still kind of injured. Orton is going to shine probably in this one, and Lashley, we all know, is limited in garbage. So my prediction is Cena, and this pay-per-view is probably going to be the worst one. I mean, they better do something with Sherry Martel and, or something and end this Vince angle. I'm pissed off about it. I, probably, I have like two minutes to address the Vince angle. The Vince McMahon angle is the stupidest angle in the history of wrestling. First of all, I know that I've read on NoDQ.com and other websites that they're honestly thinking of doing the ghost of Vince McMahon. No, we don't want to see the ghost of Vince McMahon. Like, well, this storyline is stupid because clearly you saw how it was edited where he took forever to shut the door and then it exploded. Third of all, they're planning on firing Paul London because he smirked and wasn't serious during the Vince walking around backstage. Like that's the thing of all time. Firing a great talent for the, uh, a stupid purpose. Vince, you're not running your company good with this stupid storyline. And then, Sherry Martel, who tragically passes away, rest in peace, doesn't even get a mention on your website or it took a lot of difficulty for mentioning and now I see she's gone off the website and then there's the room all over the place and this special investigator this is not 1999 you can't do the Austin run over angle again only with Vince dying you can't you cannot repeat the attitude era Vince you are not good enough to run that company it's gonna be gonna be Shane hella no not Stephanie she doesn't know what she's doing and this vid I am out